Boom! Welcome into Sports Pit 2.0 Betting Insight today, Wednesday, March 14th. Paulie and Teddy at Teddy underscore covers on Twitter. I'm at Real Sports Pit, where we post the shows and videos every single day and a few picks. Big game breakdown. Oklahoma, Rhode Island to start the day tomorrow. Miami against Loyola. The Ramblers and NC State against Seton Hall. We'll turn the shot clock on as well. I had two shot clock violations in the same uh, rant yesterday, so I'll try to to shorten it as well. <laughs> bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books coming up. Teddy, let's start with Tank Palooza, 2018. Bill Simmons tweet: Quality tanking tonight, stealth tanking. Uh, couldn't help it tanking. Even out, even uh, even out tanking. It was a tanking buffet. I'm stuffed. You look at these records, Teddy. Where most people say the experts, it's a six, seven player draft. So it's the perfect storm. Atlanta and Orlando have 20 wins. The Bulls have 23. And then you have Memphis with 18 wins. Phoenix with 19. Sacramento with 21. Dallas with 22. Memphis has lost 18 games in a row. I don't know if they win a game the rest of the year. Yeah, Memphis is pretty ugly. But last night for the Tankapalooza, the unapologetic tanking that Bill Simmons is talking about, I mean, no-shows from the Hawks and the Knicks and the Magic and the Suns, all of them. Complete no-shows. And remember, for all of this tanking and all of this losing, what do you get? You get an extra ping-pong ball in a lottery or a couple of extra ping-pong balls in a lottery. That's a lot of suffering to make your fan base go through for the hope that one of these guys is going to pan out and the ping-pong balls will land in your favor. Yeah. Fox tried. They had the lead in the fourth quarter. And then uh, the, the Thunder ran them out in the last five minutes, but it was, uh, I'll tell you what, you can add a team to the list. The Pistons, have, they're not tanking. They've quit on Van Gundy. Oh, a no-show in Utah. Uh, how about the NIT chalk last night? Other than USC late, and we'll get to uh, Asheville taking money. Baylor got the money. Ver- Louisville got the money if you bet it late. Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Oklahoma State, St. Mary's, Oregon. What the hell happened, Teddy? All of them. <laughs> you know, against the closing numbers. Eight yes. no start before uh, Asheville, uh, NC Asheville covered against USC late. Uh, and normally, that's not what we expect to see in the NIT, where there are a lot, a lot of lethargic home teams. But many of the lethargic home teams in their opener found enough energy to survive and advance. Louisville, of course, uh, one that landed right between the number. We'll talk about that when it uh, yeah. comes to bad beats, bad bets. But, you know, the Oregon game certainly stands out as a bad beat, Polly, one that was really ugly if you had Ryder. Plus the 11. Remember, they're playing four quarters in the NIT with the new rules. Ryder led by four in the fourth quarter. And uh, they were catching 11, but Oregon won 99-86. Yeah, big run out for the Ducks in the fourth quarter of that contest. And I know the first time I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute. The score is 16 to 13 and there's two minutes left in the first half. What's going on? You know, no, it's two minutes left in the first quarter. NIT with the significant rule changes. You're talking about a wider paint. Than they play in the regular season, a further three-point line they play in the regular season. Bunch of games took over money last night. And you know what? The NIT chalk was good, and the NIT unders were good. The rule changes certainly helped under betters last night. Yeah, I was yeah, they 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 pounded that. That was surprising with a lot of those games staying under. Bad bets. Who's what are they doing? Betting the Knicks plus two and a half. Went off the favorite, lost to the Mavs. Sometimes you just gotta laugh, man. I mean, really, yes. I was watching the Knicks money coming in. I'm like, who's doing that? Who's, it's got to be the same guys who were betting the Browns all year <laughs> in the NFL. Yes. It's like, let's find the worst team we can find that has no interest in winning, and let's bet on them in a game they have to win to cover. Uh, and so it was a baffling move to me. Uh, hopefully you had Dallas and were able to cash in uh, on another no-show from the Porzingis last New York Knickerbockers. T- Teddy, it was been that way for two years. There's value on the Browns. No, there's not. You haven't cashed a ticket in two months. There's no value on the Browns. All right. Uh, one more. Wagner. Bad matchup going against Baylor and all their size. Uh, Wagner was 351 in, in the nation in size, and Baylor took him apart. Yeah, and really a big second half run out for the Bears. Wagner took a ton of money. That was plus 16 at the open in some spots. Yes. Closed plus 13. You know, they hung around for a while, but the last 10 minutes of that game were pretty ugly for Wagner supporters. That. Mr. Howard was a bad bet. All right. Uh, middle alert. You have the Louisville. Remember, this open nine and a half, nine. And then word leaking out. The players voted against the NIT and didn't want to play. Close seven, seven and a half. And boom, right in the middle, they beat Northern Kentucky by eight. 
Yeah, bouncing right back and forth across the number in the closing minute. That was a sweat whichever side you had. And, of course, for the bookmakers, it was not a sweat they enjoyed. It landed right in the middle. All right, all right. Got one right. Radford controlled and dictate was going to dictate tempo. We had that right. They were bet up from three and a half to five and a half, and the under took money. Play of the day winner with the under 71-61 playing game, Radford over Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. The odds makers, we give the odds makers a ton of credit because they deserve a ton of credit. It's not easy to make lines on all these games. I don't know. This is one of their better <laughs> the lines they set better. Uh, you know, Radford playing one of the weakest defensive teams in the history of the NCAA field. They controlled the flow. They controlled the tempo. They won and covered. That was a bad result for the books. No question. The wise guys dominated that, that contest. They won a bunch of money uh, on the NCAA tourney opener last night. Yeah, a lot of bad for the books. Rough night for the shops. We like to see that. T-Wolves, Wizards over, 216 to 218 and a half. 227 uh, combined uh, points in that one. Towns was terrific. Magic and Spurs steam there. 206 down to 200 and a half. Magic run out in that one. Yeah, I mean, for Minnesota and Washington, I'll tell you what. The Wizards had that burst without John Wall. They look tired on defense right now. Couldn't get stops. They're now number 21 overall defensive efficiency since the All-Star break. And the latest word on Wall, I just read this morning, doesn't look good for his immediate return. They were hoping six to eight weeks. It's a six-week mark today. And John Wall, eh, <laughs> he's not ready. Let's just put it that way. No. Uh, for San Antonio, I, I mean, you know, Orlando was rough last night. I'll just put it that way. The under 206 down to two and a half. Never in doubt. Complete no-show from the Magic. Clippers, five and a half up to seven and a half. It lands six. Most of that money came late. Pistons and Jazz under 199 to 195. And the Jazz from seven and a half to nine. Are you kidding? 110 to 79. The Pistons were never in the game. They have quit on Van Gundy. Go back on Twitter and check out some of the uh, videos of Blake Griffin. I don't know what it was. He wasn't playing defense. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> the Pistons aren't doing a whole lot right now. This was a good game for me in my bankroll uh, last night. Certainly, Utah right. took a ton of money. Utah deserved to take a ton of money. There was a little sweat for the underbetters, but from a side perspective, that game was over after the first quarter. It was 42 to 21 after one. Right. And it was no sweat thereafter. When the Jazz have that kind of lead, their defense is phenomenal. They slowed on the pace, stayed under by margin. And the word got out here, no Metu of USC. Also, USC administration made the decision. The play, I don't think the players wanted to play in the NIT as well. And that showed Asheville from 18 down to 15 and a half. USC wins in double overtime. Yeah, I mean, the thing is with Louisville, with USC, these teams, we really had questions about their motivation. Let's give them some credit for actually winning the game. You know, they stepped up when it happens. And that says something for, hey, motivation or no motivation. Once they, you know, well, once the ball's in the air, players tend to show up and enjoy playing basketball. But from a point spread perspective, NC Asheville, never in doubt, plus 18 down to plus 15 and a half. They covered wire to wire. One of many rough results for the house from last yeah. night, Paul. All right. It is here. We start tomorrow with Oklahoma and Rhode Island. Big game breakdown. Three games coming up. And a bookmaker told me the wrong team's favored in a 11-6 uh, matchup. We'll get to that straight ahead on Sportsbit 2.0. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Like the show? Help us keep the lights on. Please make sure to comment, share, and subscribe to all the Sportsbook Review videos. Thanks so much. Best of luck. Enjoy the game.